Alright, so kita uh, continue for the class for uh, this week. So last week, uh, not last week, two weeks ago, kita dah masuk chapter 2. So I already touched a little bit on the reactor design. Tapi I will just uh, recap back uh, as we continue for today class. So uh, kita kena habis dululah chapter 2. Then only perhaps on Saturday, we can start on the tutorial for this chapter 2. Okay, so uh, the last that we stopped uh, last two weeks, we are already start start talking about designing reactor. Kita dah start sekarang nak cari basically to determine the volume of the reactor for the desired conversion yang kita dah tahu or the conversion that we want to achieve in our reactor. So for this calculation, for this stage of calculation, we are assuming that kita sekarang ada uh, dua important information which is conversion dengan rate of reaction. So if you remember, I taught you Usually when we talk about reaction, we will evaluate in terms of the rate of reaction and in particularly in terms of a minus RA, rate of disappearance of A with time. Maknanya, how much concentration of A uh, will decrease with time. Okay, so and this minus RA is obtained at a very specific conversion. So you imagine uh, in the laboratory, uh, someone has already established this kinetic data for you where they determine for each conversion ni berapa minus RA dia. And from this information, in this table, we were used to determine the volume of uh, CSTR and the volume of PFR, our two flow reactors. Okay, so at the same time, information ni pun kita boleh sampaikan dalam bentuk plot which we call as a Levenspiel plot. So Levenspiel plot ni actually helps us as well to as to understand the sizing of the reactor but the exception is kalau table dia dalam bentuk conversion melawan minus RA. On the other hand when kita nak plot which we call it as a Levenspiel plot Plot dia adalah 1 per minus RA melawan X. Itu yang beza dia. Okay, kalau table mesti X minus RA. Kalau dalam bentuk plot, uh, the Y axis will be 1 per minus RA. X axis dia conversion. Okay, so bila nak buat calculation tu kena be very careful lah. Sebab kita kena tengok whether we are using plot or we are using table. Okay. So why is this plot handy in finding the volume of reactor is by understanding uh, the equation dengan perkaitannya dengan plot. Okay, so contohnya, tadi information daripada table tu, kan table X uh, minus RA, you imagine I use the data, okay, yang Y axis saya jadikan 1 per minus RA, saya plot melawan X. Okay. So when you have the plot, if you realize, okay, when you look at the design equation untuk CSTR, if you forget uh, volume CSTR, formula dia, kalau satu CSTR, means we are talking about finding the volume of one CSTR, formula dia FA not X uh, multiplied with minus RE. Okay. Then when you see the level sphere plot, we actually can see that the volume of the reactor is actually the area, the rectangle area above and below the curve of the plot. Okay, maksud saya contohnya, let's say kita nak tahu volume if conversion reactor kita uh, 80%, means 80% daripada A saya converted, saya so nak tahu berapa volume dia. Okay, so kalau you perasan from the plot, Okay, katakan uh, X as 0.8. Okay, let's say I I draw a rectangle kotak segi empat ni. Okay, so you can see kalau saya nak cari area of this rectangle, it will be uh, uh, luas dia akan jadi sisi darab sisi, panjang darab lebar. So, the panjang will be, uh, the lebar will be, sorry, the lebar will be 0.8. Panjang dia adalah 10. Or we can say lebar dia X. Dia punya panjang dia 1 per minus RA. Or we say that X multiply with 1 per minus RA. So you can see if from the formula, kalau X multiply with 1 per minus RA and I multiply with FA0, I will get actually the volume of the reactor. So that's why they say volume of CSTR is area under and below the curve multiplied by FA0. 
Okay, so that's how we actually correlate or understand better uh, the formula of CSTR by looking at the area of the Levin spear plot. Okay, so let's say kita try satu soalan. Okay, for a better understanding of using plot or using table, kita tengok satu contoh. Okay, so let's say contoh ni, uh, we have a table, conversion melawan minus RE. So means setiap conversion tu, kita ada nilai minus RA dia. Alright. And kita nak sekarang, uh, they says that the reaction carry out in a CSTR. Uh, reactant A enters reactor rate of 0.4 mole per second. So as usual lah, by now, when you see the unit, you should able to guess the dimension and then you will guess the value. My meaning, kalau you tengok mole per second, you know the dimension is mole per time. So this will be molar flow rate. Mole per time adalah molar flow rate. But molar flow rate pun, you have to be careful. Dia ada initial molar flow rate and uh, final molar flow rate. So molar flow rate akan berubah semasa tidak balas. So it's very important you establish initial ke tengah at the end of the reaction. So in this case, the kata enters the reactor. So you know this is initial flow rate lah. Means the initial molar flow rate of A before the reaction occurs. So this is Fa0. So Fa0 kita 0.4 mole per second. Okay, so establish 0.4 mole per second. So they want us to find volume necessary to achieve 80% conversion in a CSTR. So dia beritahu kita Fa0. Dia beritahu kita X, dia nak kita cari volume of the reactor. So, this is quite straightforward. Okay, so again, bila kita nak cakap pasal volume, we will always come back to the design equation dia. So, design equation kata volume CSTR, kalau I want to calculate for one single CSTR, is equal to Fa not X multiplied with R. Fa not X divided by minus Ra. So Fa0 dah diberi dalam soalan 0.4, X as 0.8. So minus Ra ni must remember is at the conversion that we want to achieve. Meaning dalam soalan ni, dalam konteks soalan ni, minus Ra when my X is 0.8. So dalam table, when my X as 0.8, my minus Ra 0.10. So dia akan berkait lah. Means minus Ra tu tak boleh sebarangan tengok. Dia kena pilih. You must look at the table, you must see when my x 0.8, how much is my minus Re. So it's actually 0.10. So you replace inside, you will get the volume 3.2 dm cube. So as usual, lah, I think you also know engineering, one of the ways to make sure your answer is correct is by doing the unit cancellation. So when you do unit cancellation, and you see your final unit tu, adakah consistent dengan apa yang dia nak. Contohnya dalam case ni, when we do the cancellation, we can cancel mole, we can cancel second, we will get a dm cube. So, kamu tahu dm cube is volume and kita pun memang nak cari volume. So, most likely your answer is correct, uh, the formula is right because you get the desired unit that you want. So, that's how you calculate volume using table. Okay, another example, kalau kita guna plot pula. So, let's say kita tak ada table, dia beri kita dalam bentuk plot. Tapi plot tu, you be very careful sebab plot Dia masih the same information, just that y-axis ni dah menjadi 1 per minus Re. So, part tu sometimes student terconfuse lah sebab table minus Re. Plot, dia mesti 1 per minus Re. Then only you will get this plot and kita boleh kira berdasarkan uh, luas uh, bawah dan di atas uh, segi empat tu. Okay. So, dia kata reaction dia, uh, reactant A enters reactor rate of 0.4 mole per second. Masih sama. Flow rate dia masih sama. Fa0, uh, 0.4 mole, mole per second. Uh, they ask us to calculate the volume to achieve 80% conversion in a CSTR using Levin spear plot. So, masih Fa0 0.4, conversion 0.8. This so kita cari volume. So, apa perbezaan dia? Okay. The similarity dia masih design equation yang sama sebab kita nak kira CSTR design tak design equation tak ber, tak berubah but you need to know how to get the right information meaning to say okay we start by uh, FA0 0.4 which is already given uh, X masih 0.8 but now you must remember again dia minus RE tu apabila X 0.8 
Tapi from the plot, dia dah lain sikit. So, daripada plot, dia beri kita when my x 0.8, 1 per minus RA tu 10. So, that's why you see from the answer, we directly multiply with 10. Sebab dia bukan minus RA, dia dah terus automatic 1 per minus RA. Means, when my x 0.8, 1 per minus RA saya adalah 10. So, we multiply directly with 10. We will get the same volume, 3.2 dm cube. So, and if you don't uh, if you don't realize, kalau kita nak kira area segi 4 ni, memang betul tak? 10 darab 0.8. Darab dengan FA0, kita dapat volume. So, that's why they say volume of CSTR is actually area above and below the curve multiply with FA0. Okay, so done on CSTR which we learned uh, two weeks ago. Okay, then now kita pergi PFR pula. Okay, so CSTR kita dah kira, kita pun boleh buat benda yang sama to calculate for PFR. Okay, so PFR also can, the volume of the plug flow reactor can be calculated okay, based on the table as well as the plot. However, kalau if you realize from the equation, volume PFR ni, design equation dia dah lain. Sebab kita dah pernah belajar, volume PFR uh, is given as FA0, okay, integrating from 0 to x, dx per minus RA. So, kenapa kita integrate up bottom limit dia kosong, lower limit dia kosong, upper limit dia x, sebab in the single reactor, satu reactor tu dia akan convert A daripada zero, tak ada conversion sampai final conversion yang kita nak. That's why bottom limit zero daripada no conversion anti X, the conversion that we want to achieve in the reactor. So, when you draw the curve, when you draw the plot of the level sphere plot, and when you see the integral equation by right, the volume of the PFR is actually area under the curve. Tu beza dia. Kalau CSTR, you can see from the linear equation, volume dia bersamaan dengan area above and below the curve. But for PFR, from the integral equation, it's actually considered as, it's actually the area under the curve. So, you can see yourself, kalau area under the curve dah tak straightforward kan, kita tak boleh kira straightforward macam tadi segi 4, uh, CC darab CC, dan This one, area under the curve is quite uh, tricky. But, on the other hand, one advantage is that there's actually a formula, there are the formula yang digunakan, mathematics formula, that is used to calculate the area under the curve. And this formula is called as a Simpson's rule. It's a mathematics rule for area under the curve. Kita akan guna mathematics rule called as Simpson's rule. And Simpson's rule ni pun, dia punya formula tu sebenarnya ada banyak version. Dia ada one third rule, uh, five seven rule, seven twelve rule and so on and so forth. Kenapa ada banyak rule? Sebab it depends on how many points or how many area yang you nak pecahkan supaya pengiraan dia jadi lebih tepat. So, maksudnya kalau katakan 7 to F, you will break down the curve area into a smaller area so that the calculation pengiraan tu akan jadi lebih tepat. Okay. On the other hand, for us, for uh, reaction engineering, we will somewhat simplify, we will use uh, just Simpson one third rule. Maknanya, kita akan bahagikan luas di bawah curve tu kepada tiga point and kita akan kira luas tu berdasarkan hanya tiga point which is much easier lah compact if you choose 5, 7, 7, 12 it will be somewhat a little bit complex but actually the more point you choose the more accurate sebenarnya volume tu uh, the more accurate the area and hence the volume okay, tapi tak apa untuk kes kita kita guna Simpson one third rule okay, so now comes the question Macam mana Simpson one third rule tu digunakan? Betul tak? Sebab kata kita nak kata nak guna Simpson one third rule. So, what happened to our equation? Okay. So, you check back the uh, the original design equation. Do remember yang FA0 tu masih sama. Hanya part yang integral ni, part pengamiran ni yang kita akan convert dan guna Simpson one third rule. Sebab kita dah conclude yang uh, area under the curve is equivalent to our integral part. Okay, so then what happens? It will be convert into Simpson one third rule, which as shown below. Okay, so what happens? It becomes F A not kekal, 
it becomes in bracket delta x per 3. So I think you know the word delta. Delta means the difference. The differences or sometimes I will say it the gap. Okay. Gap apa? Nanti saya terangkan. Okay. So I will go to the back first. The back punya bracket because the back bracket has the three point. Remember one third rule? They are the three point. So this three point is very important to understand the selection. What do I mean? Okay. The first point will be 1 per minus Ra at my initial x or at my lower x which in this case sebab conversion saya bermula daripada kosong so dia akan menjadi 1 per minus Ra when my x is 0. Okay. So then I will go to the third point, the last point dulu. The last part akan menjadi 1 per minus Ra at my desired x or at my upper x. So contohnya katakan uh, conversion u daripada kosong kepada 0.8. So the first point akan menjadi 1 per minus Ra when my x is 0. And the third point will be 1 per minus Ra when my x 0 0.8. Okay, then I will go to the middle one. Okay, middle one, dia akan ada empat. The, it's a formula, it's a season one third rule formula. Dia adalah 1 for 1. So the formula are fixed. Tapi yang nilai bawah tu yang kamu kena be careful. Okay, so it become 4 per minus Ra at the middle x. The middle x is the one that you have to determine. Why? Okay, you start with 0. Okay, your final point is x. You have to determine how what is your middle x. Example, katakan uh, 0.8. So, your initial 0 kan? Because you start from 0 conversion. Uh, let's say your final conversion 0.8. So, middle x, middle conversion kamu adalah 0.4. So that's why dia akan menjadi 4 per minus Ra at middle x. For example, case dia katakan 0.4. Okay, so first point, initial x kamu. Last point is the last final x that you want to achieve. Middle point, you have to find yourself the middle x between initial and final. Then I go to the gap, delta x. So delta x is the differences or the difference between your initial x to your middle x or your middle x to your final x. Okay, contohnya dalam kes yang tadi saya ambil contoh, let's say 0, middle dia 0 0.4, beza dia 0 0.4. Ataupun kalau you tengok kat belakang, 0, 0, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, beza dia pun 0 0.4. So, delta x 0 0.4. Uh, and I have to make it clear, uh, delta x ni bukan titik tengah ataupun bukan middle x. Although in this case, sebab kamu bermula daripada kosong, kan? so you start from 0, naturally your delta x tu adalah middle x sebab dia bermula daripada kosong. Tapi kenapa you have to be clear about this? Nanti kejap lagi, kita akan start talking about uh, reactor bersiri. So basically pasal reactor bersiri, when it comes to second reactor, second PFR, third PFR, dia dah tak bermula daripada kosong. Dia akan bermula daripada nilai yang ada nilai. So then student get confused kenapa kejap uh, kejap middle point, kejap bukan so technically, basically theoretically delta x tu bukan titik tengah not your middle x just that if you start from zero then yes, your middle x is actually your delta x ok, so that's the uh, that's how the design equation is converted using, uh, converted into a form of a Simpson wanted rule to find the reactor volume Okay, so uh, ni example dia lah, macam saya example 0, 0 0.8, you can see uh, 1 per minus Ra at 0, last point 1 per minus Ra at 0 0.8, middle dia 4, 4 per minus Ra at x at 0 0.4. So kamu boleh tengok gap dia, so this is a clear view of how you want to see beza antara initial point to the middle point, 0.4. Atau kalau you tengok kat belakang pun 0.4 kepada 0.8 beza dia adalah 0.4. So your delta x will be 0.4. Then divided by 3 sebab one third rule formula dia dia akan bahagi dengan 3. Okay so as always lah even this is online class ke physical class ke uh, formula ni semua memang tak payah hafal. As I always tell you uh, we live in a practical world. Kalau you, when you go to work so banyak benda kita boleh google. So for example my student pun memang I tak harapkan dia untuk hafal because it easily can be found but 
what's important is macam mana kita nak solve problem uh, using the equation. Okay, so let us try one more. Uh, now, we try to solve the same problem, similar problem, but we do for PFR. So, kita tengok apa beza dia bila kita buat untuk PFR and bila kita buat untuk CSDR. So, sama konsep. Untuk PFR pun nak cari volume, depends whether information in the form of table or in the form of a plot. So, kamu just imagine someone dah buat experiment tu, dah tahu semua information ni, your responsibility is just to determine volume based on these two information. Okay, so for this case, dia kata PFR, uh, FA0 masih 0.4 mol per second. Okay, so settle. Jadi, so kita cari volume untuk PFR kalau conversion 0.8. Okay, so uh, you can see by yourself, even kalau dah guna table pun, uh, formula tu mas, akan masih menggunakan the Simpson wanted rule formula. So, CSTR is much easier lah sebab CSTR tadi tengok linear je settle. Uh, PFR ni a little bit hard because you have to adapt into the uh, Simpson wanted rule. Okay, so let us do together. So, volume PFR, volume yang kita nak cari equals to FA0. Okay, integrating tu you have to really clearly put. Kamu kena tahu, okay, kenapa 0 to 0 0.8? Sebab satu reaktor, single PFR, dia akan convert daripada 0 conversion A sampai 80% conversion. So, 0, 0 0.8. Dx per minus Re. So, we convert into Simpson wanted rule. Fa not stays. So, yang integral part tu yang akan menjadi Simpson wanted rule. So, delta x per 3. In bracket, so you have to know the three points lah. So the first point, 1 per minus RA at your initial x, 0. Okay, then last point, 1 per minus RA at 0 0.8, my final conversion. And in the middle, 4, nombor 4 tu kekal. Regardless what conversion, nombor 4 tu memang kekal sebab that's the formula. Divided by minus RA at the middle x of which you have to find. So 0, 0 0.8. Tengah-tengah dia 0.4. So, then you replace with number. So, FA0 0.4. Uh, data X, you can see yourself the gap. Macam kita cerita tadi, kosong kepada 0.4. Beza dia 0.4. 0.4 ke 0.8 pun, beza dia 0.4. So, 0.4 divided by 3. And then the 3 points. So, you can see from the table, when my X is 0, minus RA dia 0.45. When my x are 0 0.4, minus Ra 0 0.32. When my x 0 0.8, minus Ra 0 0.10. So you substitute inside accordingly, you get the volume as 1.32. So it's not difficult, just that sometimes uh, students might get confused. Kenapa daripada 0 to 0 0.8, uh, titik tengah, the middle point, sometimes the confusion. Okay, so same concept. Kita guna table, uh, kita guna plot pula. So, apa beza dia? Formula semua masih sama. Just that, kena faham yang beza utama kalau guna plot, nilai tu dalam bentuk 1 per minus RA. So, sometimes student tak uh, confuse part ni lah sebab kejap table minus RA. Uh, plot 1 per minus RA. So, nombor tu dia confuse nak kena bahagi ke nak kena darab. That's the only difficulty lah. So, in this case, uh, sama je soalan dia. FA not 0.4. Uh, dia punya conversion pun 0.8. So, apa beza penyelesaian dia? Hanya yang part kita kena ambil directly. Kalau kita tengok uh, part yang level uh, Simpson wanted rule ni masih sama. Okay, kita tengok yang ni sama je tadi yang table. Part penyelesaian dia je yang you have to be very very careful so that you don't get confused. What do I mean? Okay, FA0 masih sama 0.4. Uh, delta X masih 0.4 juga sebab kita 0.8 kan? 0 to 0.4 Difference is 0.4. Data X still the same. Ah, Yang 3 point tu punya nilai tu have be careful because at Z, at when my X is 0, apabila X saya kosong, 1 per minus RA saya adalah 2.22. Okay, so daripada plot, okay kalau betul kalau dalam test or exam, saya akan tunjuk clearly lah sebab supaya kamu tak teragak-agak nilai dia. Okay, so the... 1 per minus RA is 2.22. So, directly terus letak 2.22. The next one, when my X 0.4, 1 per minus RA saya is about 3.13. So, don't forget, 3.13 tu kena multiply dengan 4. Kenapa 4? Sebab dalam formula kan ada 4. So, it's like 4 multiply with 1 per minus RA at 0.4. So, 1 per minus RA at 0 0.4 is 3.13. So, 3.13 tu multiply with 4. Then, last part. 
when my x is 0 0.8, 1 per minus RA saya adalah 10. You can see it's 10. So, terus letak 10. So, again, uh, if you want to be more careful, do unit cancellation. You can see the unit left is dm cube. You will get the volume 1.32. So, I think you can see by yourself, dia tak susah. But, uh, understanding Kalau guna table, macam mana information tu digunakan. And we use plot, how the information can be used. Doctor. Yes. So, means that kalau ada soalan macam ni, level spill plot ni, means that we need to add another column lah, 1 per minus RA, right? Uh, kenapa kena add satu lagi column, masuk Aizat? Tak, kalau, kalau kita dah, kalau tadi, based on tadi, uh, kita dah ada conversion dengan minus RA. Betul. So maksudnya kalau kita guna reverse parallel plot ni kita kena tambah lagi satu kolom untuk buat ah. satu per minus RA untuk ah. not confuse faham faham Yes yes means kalau katakan nak convert daripada table kepada plot eh Ya yeah, ya yeah, betul 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 Ah betul betul ah correct so means you tambah one more column ah satu euro satu per minus RA then you plot the graph betul correct mm -hmm. So kadang-kadang macam uh, depends on uh, tapi kalau macam uh, soalan keluar terus keluar lah either I give you a plot or I give you a table. So you don't need to do both lah. Patutnya you tengok table, you tahu macam nak solve. Kalau plot, macam kita nak sesuaikan dengan equation. Sebab equation masih sama. So plot tu tak payah plot balik tau. Kalau bagi table, you tak payah plot balik. Ataupun bagi plot, tak payah pun buat table balik. Tapi ah, tapi kalau takut confusion tu, perhaps you can. Tapi kalau tak buat pun, actually dah boleh solve. Okay. So thank you Aizan for the question. Alright, so next one. Okay, so kita try satu lagi example. Kita guna table pula. Okay, table ni kata, soalan ni kata, reaction carry out in a 10, in a 100 dm cube PFR, 100 dm cube CSTR. Okay, soalan ni lain sikit. Dia beri kita volume pula. Sebelum ni soalan kita selalu tackle soalan yang hanya beri kita, selalu kita cek volume. Soalan ni yang tukar sikit, dia beri kita volume. So you imagine let's say uh, in your plant, you have already existing reactor. So the existing reactor punya volume ni adalah 100 each. Okay, so they ask us to find the initial molar flow rate, FA0, for both reactor to achieve 60% conversion. Okay, soalan ni lain sikit, dah beri reactor volume, dia beri kita conversion, dia nak kita cari molar flow rate. So, kalau macam real scenario, you bayangkan dalam your plan, let's say you have two existing reactor, okay, let's say you know your targeted conversion 60%, you nak tahu berapa molar flow rate yang you perlu pump. How much molar flow rate initial A yang kita perlu good, prepare to use in the reactor. Okay, so for soalan ni, okay, you know right? Okay, so let's say kita buat untuk uh, CSTR dulu. Okay, kita buat CSTR dan kita buat PFR. Okay, for V CSTR, volume CSTR, design equation dia diberi sebagai FA0X per minus RE. So you know right? In uh, engineering or in mathematics, Kalau kita nak selesaikan uh, satu uh, satu unknown, uh, kita sorry. Kalau kita nak selesaikan uh, so, masalah yang ada persamaan, kita kena make sure kalau satu equation, you only can solve if you have only one unknown. Meaning kalau satu persamaan ada lebih daripada satu unknown yang kita tak tahu, benda tu takkan boleh dissolve. Because this is what they call as a degree of freedom analysis. Bilangan pemboleh ubah dengan bilangan persamaan itu adalah penting. Maksudnya, bilangan persamaan kena sentiasa sama atau lebih banyak daripada bilangan pemboleh ubah that you don't know. Means, the number of equation that you know must be equal or more than the number of unknown that you don't know. So, for example, let's say you have one equation. You, you nampak dalam equation tu ada dua pemboleh ubah that you don't know. Okay, so it tells you one thing, either there's information, ada additional information yang you tak dapat lagi or second, sometimes you need to develop another equation sebab degree of analysis kata number equation mesti lebih daripada pemboleh ubah. Katakan kamu ada tiga pemboleh ubah, by right you must have three equation or more. If you don't have three equation, kamu ada tiga pemboleh ubah, you only have two equation or one equation you can never solve the problem. So that's also a way to help you lah to nak strategize bila let's say you have a lot of information, you tak sure cukup ke tak cukup information tu. So for in this case, why I mentioned this? Okay, dalam kes ni kita tahu kita nak cari FA0. So maksudnya volume saya kena tahu, X saya kena tahu, minus RA saya kena tahu. Baru saya boleh dapat FA0. Okay, so we go one by one. 
So volume tu kita dah tahu sebab soalan kata 100 dm cube. Okay, so left hand side dah settle saya dah tahu 100 dm cube. Uh, F not biarkan kita nak cari uh, X dia kata dalam soalan X uh, 60% so 0.6 so jangan lupa part ni kalau soalan pun beri peratus ke in percentage in other all calculation given in percentage when you want to use in calculation in equation it must be in the form of fraction so 60% become 0.6 and then minus RE so minus RE tu you have to remember Kena tengok, dia berdasarkan nilai X yang kita nak. So, X 0.6 minus RA 0.17. So, minus RA when my X 0.6. Okay, so I replace with 0.17 and then I left, I'm left with one unknown. I will get the FA not as 28.33. Means katakan, kalau kamu ada reactor sebesar 100 dm cube, you want to achieve 60% conversion, your reactor volume minimum dia mesti, ah sorry, bukan reactor volume, the molar fluoride yang kamu nak prepare initially tu mesti at least 28.33 mol per second. So you can set ready, you can know what the molar fluoride that you want to use for your reactor. Okay, then now let us try for PFR pula. Okay, sama je, volume sama tapi... You know that design equation dah berlainan, pengiraan definitely different. Okay, so volume PFR equals to F0, integrating 0 to 0 0.6. So why 0 0.6? It's because now our desired conversion is 0 0.6. Dx per minus Re. So convert into Simpson wanted rule, F0. Okay, then delta x per 3. Let us look at the back. Saya suka tengok yang belakang sebab bahkan part tu yang selalu uh, students do make the mistakes. So it becomes... 1 per minus RA when my X is 0. Sebab uh, bottom limit kita 0. So, point pertama akan jadi 1 per minus RA when my X is 0. So, last point, 1 per minus RA apabila X saya 0 0.6, my final conversion. Hence, middle, 4 per minus RA when my X 0 0.3. Kenapa 0 0.3? Because 0, 0 0.6, the middle conversion will be 0 0.3. Okay, so then... Kita tengok pula delta X. So delta X 0 to 0 0.3, the difference is still 0 0.3. 0 0.3 to 0 0.6, the difference is also 0 0.3. So delta X kita 0 0.3. Uh, then uh, we substitute into the equation. So left hand side, saya datang volume, saya ganti volume. FA not, saya nak cari, I let it be. Delta X dah selesai, 0, 0 0.3 over 3. And then replace in the equation. So when my x is 0 minus Ra dia 0.45. So kita kena bagi sebab dia adalah minus Ra. Then tambah when my x 0.3 minus Ra 0.37. When my x 0.6 minus Ra 0.17. So kita bahagikan. Okay, so then you will get Fa0 52.87. So meaning to say if you want to have uh, if you have you have 100 dm cube of a PFR uh, and you want to achieve 60% conversion the prepared molar flow rate must be at least 52.87 mol per second. So sometimes tak semestinya setiap case melibatkan kita cari volume. Kadang-kadang you must remember in the real application your plant already has the reactor. So sometimes we have to adapt to apa yang kita dah ada and kita try to calculate back to see what are the parameters that we can change, for example. Okay. So then, case ni pula, uh, reaction is carried out in a 200 dm cube uh, PFR or 200 dm cube CSTR. Calculate the initial molar flow rate for both reactors, FNO again, to achieve complete conversion of A using the plot. Okay, dalam case ni, line sikit. Okay, dalam case ni pula, uh, Somewhat sama, volume delivery, suruh cari FA0, tapi conversion dia complete conversion. So, kalau complete conversion means what? 100% lah, means all A is converted into product or we can say X to 1. Okay, 100% when you convert into fraction, 1. So, our X is now 1. Okay, so uh, I think similar. Okay, so F volume CSTR, when we calculate for volume CSTR, uh, the volume is 200. Uh, design equation, FA not X per minus RE, right? So, FA not I let it be. X is 1, okay, complete conversion 1. Uh, when my X is 1, 1 per minus RE dia 12.99. Okay, so again, dia basically hanya just that untuk case plot, 
nilai yang diberi adalah 1 per minus RE. So, bila X saya 1, 1 per minus RE saya adalah 12.99. So, we directly multiply with 12.99. You will get 15.4 mol per second. On the other hand, katakan dalam bentuk uh, for PFR. So, PFR, freezer dia sekarang, uh, volume PFR tu 200, still the same. The Simpson one third rule. Let us study the Simpson one third rule. So, FA not kita nak cari, kita biarkan. Okay, kita tengok tiga point dahulu. So, akan menjadi 1 per minus RA at 0. Sebab dia akan, uh, PFR tu akan convert daripada 0 kepada complete combustion. 100% 1. So, last point dia, naturally 1 per minus RA when my X is 1. So, middle point dia, 4 per minus RA when my X 0.5. Sebab 0, 1, middle X dia 0.5. So, technically delta X dia pun 0 to 0.5 is 0.5. Beza dia 0.5 to 1 pun, beza dia pun masih 0.5. So, delta X 0.5. So, nilai dia macam kita tengok tadi lah, kita ganti terus. Maksudnya, bila X kosong, 1 per minus RA dia 2.22. When my X 0.5, 1 per minus RA dia 4. When my X is 1, 1 per minus RA dia 12.99. So, you replace, you do unit cancellation, you will get the molar flow rate as 38.45. So, done on the single reactor. Okay, so it's important untuk faham single reactor. Sebab kalau tak faham single reactor, uh, dia menjadi susah bila kita nak pergi reactor in series. Okay, so now kita akan pergi reactor in series. Right, so often scenario, if you go to the real chemical plant, rarely that only one reactor is needed for us to achieve the desired conversion. Okay, so sometimes uh, what the what the plant will do, they will try to use catalyst. But as you know, catalyst can and will increase the conversion. Okay, other alternatives, sometimes rather than using catalyst, they will actually use more than one reactor connecting in series. Maksudnya, Okay, dia akan flow kepada reaktor yang pertama. Okay, so reaction occurs in the first reactor. Let's say your conversion is low. Okay, let's say conversion dia uh, hanya 20% yang converted. So, means reaktor pertama hanya convert daripada 0 to 0.2. Okay, so yang keluar pada reaktor pertama tu akan ada produk dan baki 80% yang tak convert. Okay, so what happen? They will flow directly to the next reactor. So, dia tak terputus. Flow in from one flow up goes to the second reactor where you give more chance for the remainder 80% tu untuk bertindak balas. Okay, so don't forget, dan reaktor kedua tu akan ada yang tak bertindak balas dan juga campuran produk yang tadi daripada reaktor pertama. So, the aim is you give them a housing macam rumah extra untuk dia lebih bertindak balas with the hope that you give them extra time, extra vessel for the reaction to occur. And in the real chemical plant, sometimes it can go up to 3 and 4 or even more. I've seen uh, 3 to 4 to quite common lah, reactor in series that working with the aim solely to increase the conversion. Okay, so then we have to understand pula how the conversion formula akan berubah atau how does it change due to this scenario. Okay, sebab sebelum ni, you all dah pernah belajar conversion, you all dah belajar reactor volume. Okay, tapi tu adalah single reactor. But this formula will have to be tweaked to adjust to when I have reactors that are connecting in series. Okay, so for example, let us see this example. Katakan kita assume sekarang CSTR, CSTR. Okay, kita connect one CSTR to the next CSTR. Okay, so must remember, yang the molar flow rate, the initial molar flow rate that goes to the first reactor, we will call it as Fe0. So, bayangkan kalau ada dua reactor ke, lima reactor ke, sepuluh reactor, molar flow rate yang asal yang masuk from the very first reactor is Fe0. Okay, so one. Next, the flow rate that exits the first reactor, which will enter the second reactor, we will call it as Fe1. Okay, then subsequently, the one that exits second reactor goes to the third reactor is Fe2. Okay, so, mesti faham how many, 
how many configuration pun FA not dia mesti merujuk kepada molar fluorid yang masuk pada asal-asal sekali yang the beginning. Okay, then we will have conversion pula. So, conversion ni kena faham sangat konsep dia yang conversion in the first reactor, it will be from zero conversion to the X1. So, normally X1 ni kita akan panggil sebagai intermediate conversion. Okay, so zero to X1. Okay, so then the minus RA will refer to X1. So, that's why we name it as minus RA1. Sebab dia very specific. Minus RA tu, macam tadi kita tengokkan, dia merujuk kepada specific conversion tu. So, this minus RA will be minus RA1, which will occur at X1. Okay. Then, you must remember, dia akan flow directly kepada reaktor kedua. Meaning to say that, baki uh, baki A yang tak bertindak balas, akan bertindak balas di reaktor yang kedua. Which means, Conversion tu tak reset. Maksudnya macam saya kata tadi, katakan 20% dah convert dalam reaktor kedua, lagi baki kan masuk reaktor ketiga. So, conversion tu akan meningkat when you go with more reactor. So, the second reactor will convert from X1 to X2. So, X1 convert dalam reaktor pertama, 0 to X1. Dalam reaktor kedua adalah daripada X1 yang masuk kepada X2 conversion yang dia achieve dalam reaktor kedua. So the react, the conversion tu tak reset. Maksudnya reaktor pertama kosong ke X1, reaktor kedua tu bukan kosong ke X2. Dia akan jadi daripada X1 ke X2. Sebab kita tak bekalkan anything baru, kita just flow in, flow out. So naturally conversion akan meningkat dengan more reactor or we can say mathematically X1, uh, X2 akan besar, akan lebih besar daripada X1. X3, katakan reaktor ketiga, X3 akan lebih besar daripada X2. So on and so forth. So, or you assume, or you can imagine, katakan first reactor, conversion 20%. Naik reaktor kedua, conversion increase to 60%. Then third reactor, hopefully increase to 90%. So, dia akan convert naik, naik, naik conversion. Sampai eventually, we hope that we get 100% conversion. So, in the second reactor, conversion dia X2, dia akan menjadi minus RA2 specific kepada X2, minus RA2. Okay, then now, kalau you have two reactor, X1 is intermediate conversion, X2 is what we call as overall conversion. Okay, so overall conversion ni merujuk kepada conversion at the very last reactor or we can say the very last conversion. So imagine if let's say you have 9 CSTR in series or PFR pun sama, 9 CSTR, 10, uh, 9 PFR. From reactor 1 to reactor 8 is all intermediate conversion. So you have 8 intermediate conversion and you have one final conversion or overall conversion at the 9 reactor. So kita ada X1 sampai X8 intermediate conversion. X9 will be the final conversion but 10 reactor is not realistic lah. I've seen 4. 4 is quite common. Uh, probably can go more. One day maybe if I can find more than 4 is quite good lah. Right. So, kenapa ni penting? Sebab sekarang kita nak kaji formula conversion. So, sebab tu re uh, reaction ni, you have to faham konsep dan kamu akan faham kenapa equation tu akan berubah. So that when you see question next time or when you face problem, you will understand kenapa equation dia dah lain so that you tak terbeban banyak benda nak hafal. Kalau you faham, it's much easier. Okay. So, what do I mean by that? Alright. So, now when we're talking about first reactor, okay, kita nak kira conversion kan? Kita ada X1, X2, kata kita dah sampai X3. Okay. So, conversion dalam reactor pertama, conversion formula dia kan how much uh, I, how much has reacted but over how much I fed. Okay, berapa yang telah bertindak balas kepada berapa yang saya swap. So, that's why it become X1 equals to yang masuk FA0 minus FA1. Kenapa minus FA1? Sebab FA0 ialah baki yang tak bertindak balas kan. So, FA0 minus FA1 divide by FA0 again. Berapa yang saya swap. Okay, then our, when we do calculation, it's much easier when we rearrange in the form of FA1 di belah kiri, selebihnya di belah kanan. So, that's why you will get FA1 equals to FA0, 1 minus X1 in bracket. Kita just rearrange equation pertama. Kita rearrange dalam bentuk FA1 sama dengan FA0 dalam bracket, 1 minus X1. So, now kita dah tahu berapa FA1 kita with only knowing FA0 and tahu conversion. 
Okay, so reaktor pertama not that hard. Okay, dalam normally kalau macam equation, reaktor, reaktor pertama ni dalam bersiri ni hampir sama macam single reaktor. Yang jadi confusion bila ada reaktor kedua, reaktor ketiga. Okay, katakan reaktor kedua ni, okay, letter, katakan reaktor kedua conversion dia macam kita nak kira. Okay, so reaktor kedua X2. Okay, X2 equals to, now is equal to FA0. Okay, so part ni yang you kena faham. Kenapa dia mesti FA0? Sebab again, conversion tak reset. Dia mesti berdasarkan the very first solution yang you prepare awal-awal tu which is FA0. Okay, that's why you become FA0 minus FA2. Dia akan minus berapa yang keluar selepas tindak balas di reaktor yang kedua. Divided by again FA0. So, when you rearrange, kita akan dapat sekarang FA2 means fluorid yang keluar reaktor kedua sama dengan FA0 in bracket 1 minus X2. So, part tu yang saya sentiasa emphasize. Conversion tak reset. Sebab tu dia mesti berdasarkan the very first solution yang you prepare yang awal-awal tu, dia mesti berdasarkan the FA0 yang kita prepare. Okay, so, then naturally, kalau when you see equation 1, equation 2, you dah boleh agak. Katakan kita ada reaktor ketiga, the third reactor in series, FA3 akan sama dengan FA0 in bracket 1 minus X3. Katakan kamu ada reaktor kelima. So, FA5 will be equals to FA0 in bracket 1 minus X5. So, tu je part yang conversion kamu kena faham. And then next part is, kena faham yang as I said, conversion will increase with more reactors that you connect. Meaning, X2 will be bigger than X1, X3 will be bigger than X2, X4 will be bigger than X3. Betul lah sebab kan kita nak kita kita kan nak conversion increase, meaning kita kan nak lebih A converted. So by right, conversion tu kena naik lah, kena meningkat. So daripada kosong, kalau imagine kosong, naik kepada 0.2, 20%, naik kepada 40%, 60%, 100%, so on and so forth. Okay. So that's on conversion. So kena paham dulu conversion. Kenapa? Sebab then sekarang kita kena kaji balik formula untuk cari volume. Sebab sekarang tadi yang kita belajar single reactor. Now kita nak cari volume kalau kita guna reactor bersiris. So bila kita guna reactor bersiris, formula tu dah tak sama. Kita kena consider part yang conversion tu. So part conversion tu yang akan menjadi a little bit problem dalam kita punya design equation. So what do I mean by that? Alright, okay. Kita pergi tengok yang single CSTR dulu. Kita tengok single CSTR dan kamu akan tengok macam mana dia berubah mengikut reaktor bersiris. Okay, kalau single CSTR, okay, formula dia, okay, kita tengok dia akan jadi ke, masuk kepada single CSTR tu FA0 kan, yang keluar FA. Okay, so formula dia akan menjadi Volume CSTR equals to FA0 tolak FA per minus RA. So, FA0 tolak, okay. So, FA ni kita sentiasa tak nak sebab kita sentiasa nak tahu volume hanya berdasarkan FA0 dengan X. Kalau kamu perasan, kenapa banyak formula ni jadi uh, dia mudahkan atau dia mudahkan sebab kita nak tahu dalam bentuk FA0 dengan X. Sebab FA0 tu yang saya prepare. Conversion tu is what we want to achieve. Okay, so that I will change FA in the form of FA0 in bracket 1 minus X. Okay, so when you rearrange, kita dapat formula yang tadi kita kira tadi, yang kita guna masa single reactor tu, volume CSTR FA0 X per minus RA. So, ni yang kita guna tadi kan, nak guna table, guna level spill plot, kita guna formula ni. So, sebenarnya macam mana kita dapat, is actually using FA0 tu lah FA, FA tu sebenarnya equal to FA0 1 minus X, kita rearrange, kita akan dapat FA0 X per minus RA. Okay. That you get single one, kita pergi yang bersiri. Okay, apa beza dia? Okay, so volume reactor ni boleh berbeza. Tak semestinya sama. Ataupun I can say the minimum volume required for this reactor in series is not necessarily the same. Kamu actually boleh guna reactor yang volume berbeza untuk mendapatkan conversion that you desire. So let's say you want in the first CSTR conversion ni let's say you can set to let's say 40%. So there's a specific volume that you can and then second reactor let's say goes to 0.8. Separate reactor with a separate volume. So then the formula akan berlainan. So what it means? Okay. 
Katakan CSTR pertama yang masuk FA0 yang keluar FA1. Okay, so dia akan menjadi volume CSTR 1 for the very first reactor akan menjadi FA0 minus FA1 sebab yang keluar pada reaktor pertama FA1 kan over minus RA1. Pak ni jangan lupa minus RA tu mesti berdasarkan X1 kalau dia reaktor pertama. Sebab tu kita letak minus RA1 supaya kita ingat yang dia mesti untuk reaktor pertama. So then become FA0. FA1 ni tadi kita dah belajar kan conversion FA1 equals to Fe0 in bracket 1 minus x1 yang tadi kita belajar. Okay, so dia akan menjadi k okay, per minus Re1. Then you rearrange, you will see that dia akan dapat dalam bentuk Fe0 x1 per minus Re1. So kalau kamu perasan memang betul. Formula single, uh, formula for the reactor in series, the first reactor is similar to a single reactor. Memang betul. Okay, so beza dia kamu just letak X1 minus RE1 sebab sekarang kamu ada lebih daripada satu X, lebih daripada satu minus RE. So that's why kita letak satu untuk kita tahu dia adalah untuk reaktor pertama. So first reaktor tu tak ada problem. Okay, second reaktor ni yang maybe have problem. Okay, what do you mean? Right, so volume second CSTR sekarang akan menjadi uh, yang masuk kepada second CSTR adalah FA1. Yang keluar daripada second CSTR, FA2. So become FA1 minus FA2. Divided by, again, minus RE2. Sebab dia mes, minus RE2 mesti berdasarkan conversion in the second reactor. Okay, so again, problem dia, kita tak nak dalam bentuk FA1, FA2. Kita nak dalam bentuk FA0, X. So, FA1 sama dengan FA0, 1 minus X1. Minus FA2, tadi kita belajar conversion, FA2 adalah FA0, 1 minus X2. So, this one, divided by minus RE2, when you rearrange okay you ada yang cancel ada yang kamu pindah kamu akan dapat the second reactor volume sebagai fe0 in bracket x2 minus x1 over minus re2 so part ni yang kamu tengok akan berbeza sedikit bukan uh, depend uh, in comparison to the first reactor however technically kalau kamu nak tengok secara uh, technical Dia sebenarnya sama. What do I mean? Okay. Con dalam reaktor pertama kan, dia daripada kosong, dia akan convert kepada kosong kepada X1 kan. So, technically, equation dia adalah Fe0 dalam bracket X1 tolak kosong. Sebab daripada kosong kepada X1 kan, so dia akan menjadi dalam bracket X1 tolak kosong. Just that, tolak kosong tu kita tak tulis. Sebab tu kita tinggal sebagai Fe0 X1 per minus Re1. So, second reaktor akan menjadi kan second reactor convert daripada X1 kepada X2 sebab tu dalam bracket X2 tolak X1. Okay, so let's say kamu confused dalam test or exam, katakan kamu tu confused, X1 tolak X2 ke X2 tolak X1. So, datang balik pada teori, kamu tahu, I told you before and logically kamu tahu conversion kena meningkat dengan reactor sebab dia tak reset, conversion akan meningkat. Maksudnya, X2 will always be bigger than X1, X3 bigger than X2. So, katakanlah kamu terletak, kamu letak sebagai X1 tolak X2, mesti kamu dapat jawapan nilai negatif. Dan kamu tengok balik, kamu tahu volume reactor, isi pada reactor tak mungkin negatif kan? Volume reactor is definitely going to be a positive volume. So, then it tells you, Okay, formula tu dah salah, dah salah sebab saya saya tahu volume reactor mesti positif. So, you change. X2 tolak X1. So, then if let's say I ask you untuk reactor ketiga, volume dia jadi apa? So, volume CSTR3 equals to Fe0 in bracket X3 minus X2 over minus Re3. So, kenapa X3 minus X2 dalam reaktor yang ketiga? So, reaktor ketiga dia akan convert daripada X2 kepada X3. So, that's how you can actually predict the equation just by looking at, okay, volume pertama, volume kedua, kamu dah boleh predict untuk volume ketiga, volume keempat, and so on and so forth. Okay. So, this is the example lah kalau dalam bentuk conversion. So, you can see how the equation change. So, dan contoh ni, kamu bayangkan dua-dua reaktor boleh mencapai same final conversion but it can be done in one reactor or it can also be done in two separate reactor so maksudnya maksudnya in a in a perspective for you not necessarily reaction tu mesti berlaku dalam satu reactor you can actually conduct the same reaction 
to get the same conversion, katakan you want the 80% conversion, this same conversion can be achieved in two reactors of a different volume. So, satu, satu, contohnya katakan dalam case your plant, let's say you have, uh, you calculated, katakan single reactor tu volume dia uh, lebih besar daripada apa yang ada kat plant kamu. So, your plant might have smaller reactors, And these smaller reactors, actually, if you connect in series, they are actually chances of which you can still get the conversion that you want. So, nanti kemudian bila kita buat example, you can see this uh, clearly. Uh, this example, you can tengok. Okay, so for example, this case, uh, given you the table, so sama tau, masih menggunakan table, masih menggunakan plot. Kita pun masih boleh kira volume reactor CSTR, volume PFR as well. Okay, tapi dalam case ni, series lah. Alright, so case ni kata, Reaction carry out in a single CSTR as well as two CSTR in series. Okay, so dia nak try run the same run, the same reaction. Either nak guna satu CSTR atau kita nak guna dua CSTR berseries. Uh, species A enters the reactor rate of 0.4 mole per second. FA0 0.4 mole per second. Uh, for the two CSTR connected in series, 40% conversion achieved in the first reactor. Uh, what is the volume of the two reactor to achieve 70% overall conversion and subsequently calculate single CSTR volume to achieve the same overall conversion. Okay, so soalan ni panjang. Apa yang dikata sekarang, uh, molar flow rate sama 0.4 untuk dua reactor ni. So, single reactor ni terus capai 70% conversion, berapa dia punya volume. Kes yang kedua, saya connect dua reactor in series di mana dalam reaktor pertama saya capai 40%, second reaktor tu akan capai 70%. So berapa pula volume kalau kita separate it out into two reactors. So kita buat comparison untuk dia punya volume. Okay. So for the single CSTR, naturally volume CSTR dia FA0X per minus RA, minus RA, tak ada minus RA1, minus RA je. Okay, salah eh, typo eh, minus RA sebab satu reaktor saja. So FA0 0.4, X uh, 0.7, 70%, minus RA apabila X saya 0.7 is at 0.12. So, when you calculate, you get 2.33, meaning kalau you nak convert, you want to achieve 70% conversion at a molar flow rate of 0.4, you need a minimum volume of at least 2.33 if it's a single CSTR. On the other hand, katakan kita nak buat dalam dua reaktor uh, yang bersambung secara bersiri in which first reactor only 40%, second reactor baru capai 70%. Okay. So in the first reactor, the volume will be uh, volume CSTR1, FA0 uh, 0.4, X1 kita 0.4 sebab first reactor only achieve until 40% per minus RA1 when my X is 0.4 minus RA saya 0.32. So, you multiply, you get 0.5 dm cube. Meaning, reaktor pertama tu, kalau nak mencapai conversion 40% dulu, kita hanya perlukan 0.5 dm cube. Then, next one, we go to the next reactor. The next reactor akan convert from 0.4 to 0.7. So, akan menjadi volume CSTR2, FA0 in bracket X2 minus X1 over minus RA2. So, uh, FA0 0.4, X2 0.7, okay, uh, minus 0.4, the conversion from, kan, daripada 0.4 to 0.7. Then, divided by, and uh, part ni jangan lupa, it must be minus RA at X2. X2 kita 0.7, so minus RA dia 0.12, so you get volume dia 1. Okay, so then now you realize an interesting, uh, that saya tadi saya cerita, kalau saya break down into two reactors, you can see that I need the first reactor 0.5 and I need the second reactor, the minimum reactor volume as 1. So, katakanlah kita tambah kedua-dua reactor volume ni, perasan tak? Jumlah yang kita perlukan kalau guna dua reactor bersiris adalah 1.5. Tapi kalau guna satu reactor sahaja, 2.33. Kita guna sama FA0, sama conversion. Tapi if you realize, volume dia kenapa tak sama total volume dia kalau guna satu dengan guna dua. Okay. So, kenapa is actually if you study the Levenspiel plot. Okay, when you study Levenspiel plot, 
kalau 2.33 tadi kita kira single reactor tu luas dia adalah ni luas yang atas di bawah curve right but when we break it down into two reactor dia punya luas tu dah lain sebab for the first reactor yang pada 0.4 ni luas yang kita kira kita tambah dengan luas yang satu lagi yang satu tu adalah luas uh, the area of the 0.4 to 0.7 area above and below the curve So that's why you will understand the area, total area of a two reactor CSTR is actually smaller, a total volume, sorry. The total volume of two reactor CSTR in series is in fact smaller than using one CSTR. Okay. So why is this uh, relevant to the real application? So like I said before, katakanlah kamu nak run aspect, kamu nak run reaction ni dalam kamu punya plan. Okay, so let's say uh, the desired conversion 70%. Sama je, everything else is the same. So, if you have in your plan a single reactor with this minimum volume of 2.33, then yes, kamu boleh terus run guna satu reactor ni, kamu dah boleh run, kamu dah boleh dapat terus 70%. But let's say lah, plan kamu tak ada reactor sebesar 2.33 ni. Let's say your plan only has smaller reactor but more than one. So let's say, so happen dalam kamu punya plan tu ada reactor volume katakan 0.5 dengan 1 or maybe 1-1. Either way, so you know that instead of using only one reactor, You can achieve the same conversion, the same result by connecting two smaller CSTR in series. So, kamu kena strategize lah kalau dapat 40%. Ah, so, the first reactor tu, volume dia mesti at least 0.5. The second one, kalau nak capai 0.7, volume dia mesti at least 1. So, this is how you can actually manipulate or you can actually strategize your reactor configuration to fit to your desired conversion by looking at the existing resources. So, tak sepertinya kena beli reaktor baru. Boleh je sambung dua reaktor yang lebih kecil. You still get the same conversion. Okay. So, done on CSTR. Now, we go to PFR. So, PFR ni yang a bit complicated. Kalau complicated sangat. Kalau kita faham, okay je. Right. So, tadi bila kita we talk about single PFR, We always say that it will convert from zero to your final conversion, right? That's why it become volume PFR equals to F A naught in bracket zero x dx per minus R A, and then kita tukar jadi bentuk Simpson one third rule. So jadi F A naught delta x per three, and then the three point will always start with zero one per minus R A. Bila x I kosong. Last point, 1 per minus Ra at my final x. Then we get the middle x. Okay. Then kalau katakan kita buat PFR bersiri pula. So same macam CSTR. PFR bersiri pun is still doable. Can also be done. Okay. So tapi again formula akan berubah. So macam mana dia berubah? Okay. Kalau case untuk reaktor pertama. Reaktor pertama yang dalam bersiri. Normally student tak akan confuse. Sebab reaktor pertama ni hampir sama macam single reaktor. Sebab dia akan still convert or uh, integrating from 0 to x1. So tadi hanya x, ni lah kita kena different. x1, x2. So dia akan integrate daripada kosong kepada x1. Then dx per minus Ra. So sama kita akan convert kepada Simpson one third rule. F A naught, delta x per 3 in bracket same. So 1 per minus Ra at 0. The last point 1 per minus Ra at x1, tengah dia 4 per minus Ra at your middle x. So, yang middle x tu yang kamu kena cari sendirilah depending on your x1. You know your 0, you know your x1, you can find your your middle x. Okay. Now, dia akan jadi problem bila dia reactor kedua. Kenapa? Sebab reactor kedua, the integration is no longer from zero sebab reaktor kedua kan convert daripada x1 kepada x2 so integration dia akan menjadi volume PFR2 equals to F A naught integrating from x1 to x2 so dia dah tak start pada kosong sebab reaktor kedua dia hanya akan uh, menukarkan daripada x1 yang keluar daripada reaktor pertama kepada x2 maknanya conversion yang berlaku dalam reaktor kedua so x1 to x2 So then, Simpson one third rule pun akan berubah because it becomes F A naught delta X per 3 in bracket. Now you see the first point will be 1 per minus R A at X1. Then last point, 1 per minus R A at X2. 
And then middle 4 per minus RA at middle X. So you have to find back again the middle X. So contohnya katakan X1 kamu 0.6. X2 kamu katakan 0.8. So maksudnya middle X kamu adalah 0.7 kan. So 0.6 X1 0.8 X2 middle X 0.7. And this is where the delta X is very important to understand. Sebab delta X tu adalah beza antara um, initial to middle or middle to final. So let's say from 0.6 to 0.7, delta X dia adalah 0.1. Sama je kalau kamu tengok kat belakang 0.7 to 0.8, delta X dia pun masih 0.1. So that's why saya tadi emphasize delta X tu bukan titik tengah. If dia start pada kosong, yes. Tapi kalau case bila dia tak start daripada kosong, in the case of reactor in series, that's the confusion that student will get. Okay, so as sama macam setiap tadi, if I ask you for the third reactor pun, I say you can guess. So volume of the third PFR akan menjadi volume PFR3 equals to FA0 integrating from X2 to X3 dx per minus RA. So, accordingly lah, follow formula Simpson one third rule dia. Okay, so the sini contoh dia lah. So, contohnya case, katakan we have uh, two configuration, single and series, and let's say both still achieve the same conversion 80%. Okay, so kita tengok kalau guna satu reactor, integrate directly 0 to 0 0.8. So, you, you just imagine sebelum masuk, tak ada A converted, selepas keluar reaktor pertama tu terus 80%. Katakan if you use a single reactor. Okay. So then integrating 0 to 0 0.8. Then you imagine bersiris ni pula kita pecah. So dalam reaktor pertama, you imagine dia convert daripada 0 to 0 0.6 dahulu. So that's why we are integrating from 0 to 0 0.6. And then second reactor, dia sambung conversion tu dinaikkan lagi kan. So daripada kosong point, uh, 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. So then you can see the formula Simpson one third rule tu akan berubah. Dia hanya berubah titik uh, the three points tu is only uh, change because of your lower limit, lower x, uh, your uh, sorry your lower x and your upper x. Means berapa permulaan x yang masuk reaktor tu dan berapa x selepas keluar daripada reaktor tu. And then delta x tu lah yang part yang always must remember is the gap between first to middle or middle to final. Okay, so kita buat balik soalan tapi kita buat untuk PFR pula. Okay, so table yang sama, FA0 pun sama, conversion pun sama. Meaning, uh, one reactor PFR straight away achieve 70% or we may use uh, two PFR with the intermediate conversion 40%. So ingat eh, kalau conversion sebelum last reactor kita panggil intermediate conversion. So X intermediate conversion, X1 0.4. Inter, uh, the final conversion X2 0.7 okay. So we solve separately okay. So let us solve hmm, Single pun mana? Sekejap. Single ah, okay. Kita solve yang single dulu okay. So single reactor From 0 to 0 0.7 So kita buat dalam bentuk Simpson one third rule punya formula So FA0 delta X per 3 1 per minus RA At 0 Final point 1 per minus RA at 0 0.7. Uh, final uh, middle point 4 per minus RA at 0 0.35. Sebab 0, 0 0.7, middle point dia 0 0.35. Okay. So kalau you tengok, if you see the table, uh, for the case of 0 0.35 pada dalam table kan, so you have to actually interpolate. But I do admit that uh, sebenarnya kalau interpolate pun tak rak tak begitu tepat because kalau kamu perasan data dia bukan linear, data dia curve. So means kalau kita interpolate nilai kat tengah-tengah ni actually is not so accurate. So don't worry, kalau macam keluar exam or test, saya tak macam saya takkan suruh kamu interpolate lah sebab interpolation cannot, not so accurate because the line, kita tengok tadi kita plot, kita plot pun kita boleh tengok dia bukan linear plot, dia adalah curve. So, bila kita ambil interpolation nilai tengah tu, is not so accurate. Just like in this example, uh, we assume that we need to interpolate lah. Okay. So, then you will get the volume. Okay. So, delta X dia, as usual, 0 to 0 0.35. The differences delta X dia is 0 0.35. The rest masih sama. Okay. Then I go to the two PFR in series. So two PFR in series, uh, PFR pertama akan convert from uh, 0 to 0 0.4, right? So if not, delta X per 3, the 3 point will be 0, 
0.4, middle dia 0.2, delta x dia 0.2 and then you follow the table, you will get the value, substitute in accordingly. Okay, so sama. Okay, so part normally single reactor ni, uh, first reactor okay. Uh, second reactor ni sometimes it get a little bit confusing. So second reactor ni jangan lupa dia akan convert from intermediate to final conversion daripada X1 kepada X2 kalau kita adalah reaktor kedua. So, it become 0 0.4, 0.7. Okay, so Fa0, delta X per 3, 1 per minus Ra at 0.4. Last point, 1 per minus Ra at 0.7. Middle dia, you have to find. So, 0 0.4, 0 0.7. Middle X dia, 0.55. So, Delta X dia beza berapa? 0.4 to 0.55 beza dia 0.15. Even 0.55 to 0.7 pun beza dia 0.15. So then you ikut the table, you substitute in the value, you will get 0.61. Okay, so then same question that we will have. Will the volume of a single PFR sama tak dengan volume PFR yang guna dalam bersiri? Okay. So, if you see technically, kalau single, uh, kalau bersiri, total volume dia akan menjadi 1.01, 1 .01, right? 0 0.4 plus 0 0.61, 1.01. Means kalau saya nak guna dua reaktor bersiri dengan conversion 0 0.4, 0 0.7, jumlah volume dia kalau ditambahkan adalah 1.01. .01. Kalau saya guna... One single CSTR, you can see the volume is 1.03, hampir sama. Why? Okay, so again, kalau tak nampak, tengok Lewis Peer Plot. Jangan lupa, kalau PFR, volume reactor kan luas di bawah graph, uh, the area under the curve. So, however you cut it, either at 0 0.4, 0 0.7, atau straight 0 0.7, the total area is actually the same. Meaning, meaning to say, not necessarily you need to use sama je conclusion macam CSTR just that not necessarily you need to use one PFR you can actually break it break it down into two smaller reactors or more than one uh, more than that to achieve the same desired conversion just that theoretically area volume tu untuk CSTR if you break it down or you make it into single is still the same total volume, but it's not the same for CSTR. In fact, CSTR, when you put it in series, the required volume are actually smaller than using one big, uh, one CSTR for the very same reaction. Okay, so that's done for the reactor in series. So that's uh, how you use the table. You use the lemon spear plot. To determine the volume of a single or an in series or as we do in example, sometimes kita tahu volume dia, kita boleh cari molar flow rate, so on and so forth based on the condition. Okay, so the last one for tonight, okay, then we are done for chapter 2, means uh, Sabtu ni kita buat tutorial lah, Sabtu ni tak boring sangat, kita buat tutorial, it will be less uh, headache, right? So, uh, kita akan belajar two different things, uh, we will learn uh, the different terms that you might see in reaction engineering which is uh, space time, residence time and reaction time. So maybe you already pernah dengar reaction time, I think you probably have heard. Uh, residence time perhaps, space time maybe not so but there's also important terms that you need to know for reaction which is space time. Okay, So first of all, space time and residence time is only for flow reactors, meaning PFR, CSTR, kita akan jumpa space time, residence time. Uh, reaction time is specifically for bash reactor. So, kenapa? Sebab kalau kita tengok, space time is actually formula dia, uh, kita akan guna tau. Tau is a symbol to represent space time. Kalau reaction time, small t tau lain sikit. So, kita guna tau. Tau is for space time. And space time is actually equals to Volume of your reactor, so katakan PFR, volume PFR. Cross CSTR, volume CSTR. Divided by the inlet volumetric flow rate. Okay, so halaju isi padu awal asal yang masuk ke dalam reactor. And hence, is defined as, dah tahu kan kataan space time mesti time kan? So unit dia, dimension dia time lah. Unit dia kena di second, hour, minute. And the explanation is, space time is time required 
to process one reactor volume of fluid based on the reactor entrance condition. Or, in another word that's easier to understand, space time ni adalah holding time. Okay, sebab kamu kena ingat, kita guna flow reactor, dia kan flow in, flow out, flow in, flow out. But, you still want the uh, the reactant to stay at certain time in the reactor sebelum dia flow out. Ataupun how long you want to hold the the reactant dalam dalam reactor tu sebelum dia akan keluar. So, holding time tu adalah sebenarnya space time. Or sometimes kita akan guna perkataan mean residence time. Okay, so uh, in another way nak tengok visually, katakan you have a PFR. PFR kan macam silinder kan? Okay, katakan PFR tu panjang dia 20 meter. Alright, katakan flow rate kamu adalah 1 liter per second and volume reactor tu adalah 4 liter. So, volume 4 liter. Volumetric flow rate dia 1 liter per second. So, space time dia akan jadi 4 liter volume divided by volumetric flow rate, inlet volumetric flow rate, 4 liter divided by 1 liter per second, you get 4 second. So, apa masuk 4 second? Kan holding time kan? So, 4 second tu adalah masa of which the liquid, the fluid, katakan reactant kamu tu, sorry, the reactant will take 4 second to travel from the beginning to the reactor and exit the reactor. Means 4 saat saja reactant to stay dalam reactor, dia akan keluar. So, that's what we call as holding time. And this holding time is very important because if let's say, katakan kamu perasan conversion kamu tu rendah. Okay, katakan kamu tengok conversion tu kamu rendah. So, one way is for flow reactor, kamu boleh you can adjust the holding time. So, but you know, right, if they stay longer in the reactor, you, there's more chance for the reaction to occur. So, macam mana kita nak buat? Okay, katakan, uh, katakan at first, part set, you put, you set the holding time as 4 second. Meaning, kamu adjust volumetric flow rate dia 1 liter per second. Kamu adjust, kamu tahu holding time dia 4 second. And then, kamu tengok conversion kamu rendah. So, naturally, kita nak buat apa? Kita nak increase the holding time, right? Longer holding time more time for the reaction to occur. So, apa yang kita boleh manipulate? Kita tengok one, space time tu adalah volume per volumetric flow rate. Volume reactor, kita tak boleh manipulate sebab reactor tu dah ada. Kita tak boleh pergi besarkan atau kecilkan reactor. Most of the time, we don't do that. But you can see that we can adjust volumetric flow rate. Maksudnya, kalau kita nak uh, holding time lebih lama, volumetric flow rate tu kita perlahankan lah. If the slower volumetric flow rate, the higher holding time. Kalau kalau kita tengok equation ni pun kita tengok dia adalah berkadar songsang. I want hard, longer holding time, I will slow down the flow rate. So naturally, if I want to have faster holding time, I will increase my flow rate. Logik lah kan, kalau kita slowkan flow rate, dia akan move flow, dia akan flow slower, so longer holding time. So that's what sometimes in terms of uh, flow reactors, they always talk about holding time. How how much, how long is the holding time? So, if your conversion is not good, you can actually manipulate, adjust the holding time. Okay. Then, it comes to pula space, uh, space time dengan residence time. Apakah beza dia? Okay. So, macam reaction time tu dah clear. Reaction time dalam batch reactor. Masa, uh, masa yang diperlukan untuk the reaction to occur is reaction time for batch reactor. Space time, residence time, flow reactor. Hampir sama kan? Masih holding time. But, apa beza residence time? Okay. Actually, residence time, formula dia sama macam space time. Volume per volumetric flow rate. Tapi beza dia adalah, okay. Space time ni, dia berdasarkan inlet volumetric flow rate ataupun volumetric flow rate that you set initially. So, katakan kamu liquid, katakan kamu guna pump, okay, kamu pump, kamu set flow rate dia, katakan 1 liter per second. Then, kamu kira dia punya uh, time tu, itu adalah space time. Okay. But you know naturally in a real chemical plant, okay, when we talk about using uh, using pump, so on and so forth, volumetric flow rate ni tak semestinya akan constant throughout the reaction. Okay. So, for example, in the case of gas phase, okay, lagi susah sebab volumetric flow rate gas phase ni akan berubah even if you change temperature, you change pressure, even a slight change of the condition, volumetric flow rate dah tak sama. So, when you calculate based on the actual volumetric flow rate during the reaction, that is what we call as residence time. 
Okay, so sama macam liquid. Nanti bila kamu buat eksperimen or maybe in your real plant, you can see when you set the real uh, flow rate, selalu the actual one takkan sama dengan the the real flow rate. Uh, the real flow rate is hardly the same as the actual one. So when you calculate using the actual flow rate, volumetric flow rate, we call that as already as our residence time. Okay, so dah tak sama. So, space time ni mesti berdasarkan the inlet condition that you send. Hence, alright, if your volume tak change, volumetric flow rate tak berubah, remain constant throughout the reaction, residence time is equal to space time. But if there's a change of your volumetric flow rate due to the disturbance in reactor, pressure ke, temperature ke, then your residence time is no longer the same as your space time. Okay, so that's the difference between residence time, space time. Sebab biasa kita familiar dengan residence time, not so much of a space time. So, yang paling senang kalau macam saya, saya kata saya ingat space time tu holding time. So, it's easier for me to remember. Last one for today, last one, space velocity. So, sometimes... Uh, kenapa kita kena tahu ni? Sebab when you're talking about reactor performance, sometimes they will talk about space time. Sometimes in terms of space velocity pula. Okay, so space velocity ni kita guna SV. And space velocity is basically 1 per space time. So meaning akan menjadi inlet volumetric flow rate kepada volume reactor. Dia reciprocal saja. Kalau space time, tau is volume per volumetric flow rate, inlet. Space velocity terbalik. So, inlet volumetric flow rate kepada uh, volume. However, ada beza juga dengan space time. Apa beza dia? Walaupun dia satu per kan, sama je formula. Tapi, beza dia adalah inlet volumetric flow rate tu measured at the very standard specific condition. Kalau space time, kita kira pada condition reactor kita. Tapi when kita nak kira space velocity tu, volumetric flow rate tu tak boleh sebarangan kira. Dia mesti, uh, bukan kira, must be measured at the standard condition according to the phase. Okay, katakan if you are using liquid phase, dia mesti measure the volumetric flow rate, the inlet volumetric flow rate at the temperature range between 15.6 to 23.9. And for gas pula, gas uh, uh, for gas space pula, okay, dia, dia akan panggil gas hourly space velocity, GHSV, or liquid space, uh, liquid hourly space velocity, LHSV. Okay. Kalau gas pula, they can follow what I'm sure you are very familiar, they can follow STP, standard temperature, standard pressure. But then standard temperature pressure ni pun might have different definition for different industries. But usually, kita akan guna IUPAC. IUPAC standard kata, you must measure your volumetric flow rate ni for gas at 0 Celsius 1 bar. So, as we ni, the condition of which you measure is very specific to the temperature range and sometimes to the pressure range depending on the phase that you are uh, measuring for. Okay. So, uh, okay, so that's the last slide for today. All right, so again to understand apa tu space time, apa tu space velocity. Okay, so let's say, katakan kamu kira, kamu ada space time 5 minit, holding time tu 5 minit. So, maksudnya apa? Holding time or space time of 5 minutes, meaning that for every 5 minutes, you will process one reactor volume or simpler word, for every, the, the liquid or the reactant will stay at 5 minutes in your reactor before it has to flow out. And then, what about space velocity? Space velocity, of course, kalau space time, time, right? Kalau space velocity kan 1 per space time, so unit dia akan menjadi 1 per time, dimension dia. So, uh, per hour, per second, per minute. Sebab so, dia terbalik sahaja dengan space time. So, katakan dia kata space velocity adalah 5, 5 per hour. So, meaning for every one hour, you will process five reactor volume of the feed, but at specified condition. Okay, so based on the space time and space velocity. Although I will say, we probably talk much about space time, lah, rarely about space velocity, but depends also on the uh, information uh, desired by the reaction. Okay, uh, so that's all for today. Uh, I've completed chapter 2, uh, then Saturday as usual lah, kalau tak ada masalah, this Saturday we will continue tutorial. So Saturday ni more lepak sikit lah, kita just, uh, I will explain to you the tutorial question and then I think that you will understand better. Kalau macam hari ni nampak macam banyak sangat, is memang betul, tapi I think when you see the soalan tutorial, you will understand actually tak susah pun, it's actually quite 
okay to understand. Alright. So that's all for today. Ada tak sebarang soalan ke? Ada apa-apa ke daripada Aizat dengan Hidayah? Ada doktor. Alright. Aizat okay Aizat? Ah, tak ada <laughs> Tak apa, tak apa Nanti kita uh, Aizat Sabtu ni okey ke? Uh, Hidayah? Uh, saya okey Tapi balik kerja malam lah ah, Kita start lambat sikit ni. lah ah, Kita start dalam pukul 9 ke? Okay. Uh, kita start pukul 9 lah eh Sabtu ni Okay Alright Okay, thank you Aizat Thank you Hidayah Have a good rest Thank you Rata Welcome Nak apa dia? Sebelas Berapa ya? Sebab saya nak berapa kelas sekolah saya? Saya rasa 9 sampai 10.30 dah boleh dah. Tak payah sampai 2 jam. Hmm. Uh -uh. Ni 10.30 lah. Kita masih ikut schedule lah. Kita habis 10.30. Okay. Alright. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.